Hi, my name is Lincoln Baxter. I work for Red Hat on the JBoss Forge team, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to develop Java EE applications and extend IDE functionality in Eclipse using JBoss Forge. Let's start by creating a new project. To start Forge, press Command 4. This will show us the Forge context menu, where I'll select New Project Wizard. I'll select the default Java web application with Maven and click Finish. All I have to do is type in my project name. Now let's create a JPA entity and add some fields to it. Forge detects that we still haven't configured JPA in our project and asks us for information like, what's the target server you'd like to run this on? Which version of the JPA spec would you like to use? And which JPA provider would you like to use, among other things? This creates the persistence XML in our project and adds the necessary jar files to our POM. All we have to do is type the name of the entity. In this case, let's pick customer. In order to add JPA fields, we'll use the JPA new field command. This command allows you to choose the target type as well as some specific JPA column configuration, but the only required field is the field name. Our customer will have a first name, and if we rerun this command, we can also specify last name. The scaffold generate command creates a CRUD representation using the technology chosen during generation. In this case, we'll use AngularJS with REST endpoints for the backing data store. Again, Forge notices that our project isn't completely configured to use the technologies we wish to use, so it asks us what we'd like to do. We'll go with the defaults, then select Customer for generation, and also tell Forge to generate any necessary REST endpoints. We click Finish, and we can see that our endpoint has been created, our web front end has been automatically generated, and our POM file has been updated to include any necessary API jars. Now it's time to run our application. In this demo, I'm using the JBoss Enterprise Application Platform to run the application. However, given that the scaffolded application is pure Java EE and does not depend on any specific library, you can deploy it to any other Java EE 6 or Java EE 7 compliant container. Let's see how our application behaves. We'll start by creating a few new customers. The generated application also supports searching from specific entity attributes, like in this case the first name and the last name. That's how easy it was to start from nothing and go straight to a Java EE application with an AngularJS frontend. Among several features that Forge provides, one of the most powerful is its extensibility. You can create extensions, called add-ons, that run inside your IDE. The best part is that once you've added commands and features to your add-on, you don't need to change a single line of code to execute those commands in another IDE, like NetBeans or IntelliJ or even the command line. This is truly write once, run in any IDE. We're going to create a new add-on and show how easy this process is. To create an add-on project, we'll go back to the project new wizard. We'll create our example add-on. For project type, we'll choose Forge Add-on and click Next. Forge has automatically selected some default settings for us, and this is all we need. In a simple way, Forge commands can be created using an annotation-driven strategy. The simplest Forge command is a plain Java class with one method annotated with at command. We'll create a new Java class, call it custom command. Now, we can turn this Java class into a forge command simply by running the new annotated UI command command. We'll select our command name, custom, and click finish. This is all it takes to create a forge command. Once your command is ready to run, 
Just execute the build and install add-on command and it will be installed into Eclipse. Now that our command is installed, we can execute it by again bringing up the Forge context menu where our command appears. If your command requires user input, you can add parameters to your method using the at option annotation, and Forge will render it as an input field of the proper type. All we have to do is build and install again, and we're ready to go. That's all. Thanks for watching, and make sure you watch our other JBoss Forge videos in our YouTube channel, and visit our website at forge.jboss.org.